is having a news conference about that uh, terrible shooting and the questions being raised about police conduct. God on our city, on our communities, and on our officials. God, we pray that thou would now lend us your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding that we will do and say all of the things that will be pleasing in thine sight. For you have said that it is you, O oh God, who've called for peace and that we will be just toward all of our brothers and sisters. And so, God, we put it in your hand knowing that you would do all things well. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do, even in this situation. Amen. I'm Pastor Gerard uh, A. Robinson, Sr. of the McEwen Missionary Baptist Church, and I've come on behalf of the faith-based community and our community at large uh, to talk to these, our city officials, and we have come to request and ask uh, and say to them and say to all that uh, we are concerned about the senseless uh, uh, killings of, of African Americans in our communities and people of color. We've come as a community leader to request and ask that there be complete transparency in the investigation of this incident. We've also come to suggest and request that there be an independent and separate investigation by the U.S. Attorney General's Office and the Federal Bureau of Investigation to assure that there is no bias or no uh, leniency uh, in regards to how this investigation is carried out. Uh, we look forward to uh, them doing what is right. We look forward to them doing what is just. I'm also here to uh, submit to our community that when injustice is done anywhere in our country, anywhere, in our cities that we have a right to protest and that we should protest for those things which are right and in the best interest of our community. However, we do want to suggest that all of our protests, all of the people who will be protesting, that you do it in order and that you do it as peacefully as possible, that it will serve our communities uh, no good to have anybody else harmed or anybody else hurt in this situation and to allow uh, the arms of justice to do what it is supposed to do and trust that it would work in the best interest of our people and our community. Thank, thank you, Pastor. Uh, I'm Chief Carl Dabity with the Baton Rouge Police Department. I want to thank all of you for coming this morning. Um, uh, those of you in the room that's, that's here, I also want to thank those watching live and those that will watch and read about this later. As a community, when difficult things happen, it's important to have an honest conversation about it. What we want, what we know to be true, and how to ensure that justice and accountability are held to the highest levels. To begin, I'd like to share with, with you what I know. Early yesterday morning, we experienced a horrible tragedy. A life was lost. That life belonged to 37-year-old Alton Sterling. Yesterday's events began around 12.35 a.m. when two of Baton Rouge Police's uh, uniformed officers responded to a disturbance call at 2112 North Foster Drive, where the Triple S Food Mart is located. The call came from someone who stated that a black male selling CDs and wearing a red sweatshirt threatened them with a gun. When officers arrived, Sterling was armed and the altercation ensued that resulted in the loss of his life. Exactly what happened at this time is the reason we are here today. Like you, there, are a lot that we do, uh, there is a lot that we do not understand. And at this point, like you, I am demanding answers. <clears throat> like you, all my prayers are with this community and especially with the family and loved ones of Mr. Sterling and all the members of the Baton Rouge Police Department who are working hard every single day. The officers involved in yesterday's events were Blaine Salamone, a four-year veteran of the Baton Rouge Police Department, and Howie Lake, a three-year veteran of the Baton Rouge Police Department. Both officers have been placed on administrative leave pending the investigation. The investigation is now ongoing. With that being said, and 
echoing what Pastor Robinson said, it is our uh, goal and our mission to make sure that a thorough, just, transparent, and independent investigation be conducted into this incident. Therefore, I have spoke with Walt Green, our U.S. attorney. I have spoke with the FBI. I have spoke uh, with Colonel Edmondson. And uh, we have found that the, we are going to turn the entire case over to the U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI to conduct the investigation from this point. We feel that it is in the best interest of the Baton Rouge Police Department, the city of Baton Rouge, and this community for this to happen. So that has happened immediately. Actually, it's already happened, and it is now in the hands of the U.S. Attorney. Uh, that investigation is being, is, uh, uh, will be, will, the U.S. Attorney will lead a fair, objective review of the tragic circumstances that have led to this event. We have been in constant communication with them throughout the past 24 hours, and we'll continue to be in contact with them and work with them in any way that we need to to make sure and assure this community that it is transparent, neutral investigation will be done. In preparing to speak with you today, it is important for us to understand that we had that we have as many facts as possible and had communicated with all the other necessary authorities prior uh, throughout this entire investigation. As the governor, as Governor Edwin stated this morning, we know this investigation uh, will be thorough and we thank you in advance for your patience as we work to get the answers that we all want. Through the investigation conducted by the U.S. Attorney and assisted by the Louisiana State Police and the FBI, we will uh, take it. We will be comprehensive into taking into account any and all evidence, including full audio and video from both officers' body cameras, dashboard cameras, and any other video that we have attained, such as those that have circulated online, as well as statements from numerous witnesses who were uh, present and on the scene. With that being said, if you have any information, including any photos, video footage, or if you witness the altercation, we urge you to come forward. All evidence and information is helpful in the investigation process, and no stone will be left unturned. If you have any such information, please contact the U.S. Attorney's Office so that we can get that information from you. Today, I speak to you as Chief of Police, but more importantly, as a fellow member of our Baton Rouge community. We ask for your voluntary compliance to our laws and peaceful assembly uh, with any gatherings that may be planned. We encourage you to plan and protest, as Pastor Robinson said. We don't have issues with that. We just ask that you do it peacefully and that no one gets hurt or injured. Uh, despite the events that we are here for this morning, I want to remind everyone that we have hundreds of officers that risk their lives every single day and have a very difficult job, and we will continue to work in this community and for this community throughout this event. Thank you. Uh, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Uh, good morning. I'm Melvin L. Kip Holden, Mayor President of the City of Baton Rouge and Paris of East Baton Rouge. Of course, we all uh, feel the pain of what's happening in our community. It's a sad day and a tough day when you're confronted with the situation and the challenges that face you in these positions in which you were elected to or appointed to. I can say this, let me personally thank uh, the President of the United States and his staff. From early this morning, uh, we received nothing but calls uh, from the President's office asking what ways they could help and volunteering to do whatever they need to do to make sure justice is served. Let me also thank our governor, uh, who also has stepped out again with phone calls and talked to us about the role that he will be playing. Uh, let me thank uh, the state police uh, for what they are doing, and you'll hear more about the roles that will be played there, but in particular the Justice Department. When we talked about that, and Hilla can say, we've always said we must have transparency, as uh, also the chief has said. But we started talking about this yesterday in terms of transparency. This just wasn't an idea that hit us for a press conference today. When the citizens out there, they are taxpayers. With taxpayers come the words accountability. With accountability comes 
the burden of making sure, and maybe it's not really a burden, but the responsibility that's delegated to you must be carried out in a very thoughtful manner, and a manner that satisfies those who pay our wages and our salaries. But at the same time, a manner that assures them that we're not here to hide anything at all, and that we believe that justice will be served. But the other part is simply this. You know, you find people now who want to jump and everybody wants to make a political statement, including the Justice Department. You know, we got congressmen from New Orleans said, well, I'm calling for a full investigation. Well, we've already been working on that. Uh, it's not like we need to be uh, handheld and spoon fed when it comes down to doing what's right. And so when we tell you these things, and what's going on is very, very important that you understand uh, we are doing our best to make sure we get all the answers. But one call that came in today was really uh, one of a mayor, Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake, out of Baltimore. And that call meant a lot from the standpoint that Baltimore has been through the same thing that we're witnessing here in Baton Rouge. And she said, we want you to know that we're willing to reach out to your city any way possible. But she not only stands up as the mayor of Baltimore, but the past president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. And so, therefore, we've had calls from all across the United States with mayors offering their help and their prayers for the citizens of Baton Rouge, but also for those who are working this case. I will tell you this. We are an inclusive community. When you look at what has happened in Baton Rouge over the past 12 years, there are not many cities that can say it has a number one rated police department, fire department, and EMS. We can say that. And that rating has been ours for a number of years. We are an inclusive city. When you look at the other ratings, we strive on excellence. And I tell you that manner of excellence will not be lost in this investigation. But we want to make sure that we That's the mayor the of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Kip Holden. Officials there, the police chief, addressing the fatal police shooting of Alton Sterling, a black man killed by police outside a convenience store early Tuesday morning. Outrage growing today after cell phone video appearing to show that the incident, uh, appeared to show the incident circulated online. Joining me now is MSNBC chief legal correspondent Ari Melber. Ari, walk us through the video, what we just heard from officials. We know that the Justice Department is now engaged with a federal investigation as well. That's right, Andrew. That is the news breaking just over the past few hours, and that is, we should note, much faster than we usually see the Justice Department enter in. But when you have the governor and local officials calling for it, uh, there isn't much less to say, much left to say. As for the video, which we can put up on the screen, this is a independently a filmed video of the kind we've seen on cell phones in other areas. We haven't independently confirmed it. You see the officers basically are restraining the individual there, and he seems to be held down. Then you have the shots fired. There's a lot we don't know, including video from the surveillance as well as potentially from the body cameras, if it still exists, that could give a lot more information about what happened beforehand. Harry Melbourne, thanks so very much. Uh, tragic situation, obviously. Uh, everyone there calling for restraint and for understanding as they investigate. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is about to take aim at Donald Trump's business dealings here in Atlantic City.